Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the April 16th, 2019 meeting of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. Welcome to the viewers at home. And as a reminder for those watching and want to see a replay, about tomorrow morning, you'll be able to go on the Town of Hampton website under Channel 22, click on Hampton Municipal Budget Committee for any replays, as well as any of the other uh, town meetings that take place. I'd like to have uh, Steve Henderson lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We could start to our far left with uh, Mrs. Bridal Russell and introduce yourself. Ginny Bridal Russell, Selectman's representative to the Budget Committee. I'm not school. Selectman, school board. Oh, oh, she Dave did that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, no, school board representative. That's you okay. Uh, Russell Bridal, Selectman's rep. Brian Warburton. Mike Bluff. Bob Head, Village District Representative. Dave Mora. Joyce Skippertis. Stephen LeBrange. And, and we have Barbara Kravitz again this year doing an excellent job doing the minutes of the meetings and we appreciate it very much. Love seeing this, perfect attendance. Uh, yeah. That's a great sign for the year. Uh, you all should have received both the agenda of course and also thanks to Barbara and I think I forwarded them twice the minutes of the February and March meeting. Um, anybody want to make any motions or revisions to the February minutes? Steve LeBranch. Yes. Um, on page three, it says, Mr. LeBranch said this is a bottom line budget, so many could be, money rather, could be moved, and year-end surplus goes back to the town. It should say back to the taxpayers. Okay. Excellent. So that's... Page, page three of February minutes, uh, Barbara. Okay. Back to the tax payments. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Terrific. I'll accept a motion to approve. Go ahead, Barbara. Right below that. Yes. There's a typo in Jerry Tinoy's name. You had two E's, right? <laughs> yeah. You take out an E. Yeah, right. And uh, on page two. Uh, right down at the bottom, uh, yep. the notation is that uh, they will add the all-day activity of the Boston Circus just the evening. Correct. 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 Any other changes for the February minutes? Except a motion to approve February? I'll make a motion. Moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Stay. All those abstain? Mr. Henderson, Mr. Bridal, Mrs. Bridal Russell abstained. Now for the March uh, 19th minutes. Do we have any uh, changes? As you know, that meeting was about 35 minutes, and Bob Lab commented how he likes that. I was hoping to shoot for 20. <laughs> you weren't here for that one either. So I have a motion to approve the March 19th minutes, moved by Mr. Pluff, seconded by Mr. Mara. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Six in favor, two, uh, five in favor, three abstentions. We have Mrs. Brado Russell, Mr. Henderson, and Mr. LeBranch. Great, thank you. And you will get the, uh, Barbara does a great job in the minutes. They'll be available uh, you know, within five business days. She's always way ahead of that. And they're also out on the, uh, the draft minutes out on our town website, as well as uh, uh, the agenda that, as you noticed, uh, you've received a, a week in advance, which I want to make sure I continue that because it's good for everybody to see it. Um, I thought for Joyce's benefit tonight, but really kind of the public at home, I wanted to run, and, and this is strictly a quick update on what the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee does and what a, what a municipal budget committee is. And we will... It will kind of be a nice segue into the discussion of the town and school results. But I refer everyone to the, and if you, if you went online and typed in RSA 32 colon one state of New Hampshire, it brings you right into New Hampshire town and city. And as you know, we're an official budget committee, which was established in 1964. An adjacent town to us in Exeter is an advisory committee. That's a big difference because the advisory committee doesn't have 
the, the clout, so to speak. In, the, in our municipal budget committee, uh, our purpose under third, RSA 32 colon 16 is we prepare the budget. And you've heard a lot of us say that once it gets through, in the case of the schools or the town, comes to the budget committee, we then own it per se, we prepare the budget, send it off to the deliberative session and then the, the eventual voters. We make recommendations. Uh, we meet, um, hold on a second. Um, we make recommendations. We meet with department heads or other officials from both the town and school to um, ask questions about expenditures, about revenues. All this information is critical throughout the budget process so that we're able to make educated and prudent decisions on behalf of the voters. The key component here, and I think for many folks that have been on both, um, that have been both on the uh, budget committee and the selectmen, and I know we have a few here, and the, in the precinct in the past, we review the expenditures. We don't control the expenditures. So that's an important thing. Once the budget is passed, Back in the for back to the selectmen or back to the school board, and then they in turn have a bottom line budget. We conduct the budget hearings, which take place in January, and those will be set up with dates that I will be working with Christina Osman for um, in any any correspondence that we have in setting up those dates. But as I mentioned at the last meeting, that's what usually happens. We forward the budget on, and then we have deliberative sessions set up for both the town and school, where folks come and make changes or amendments. And then we have the elections in March. We're a, there are SB2 towns that have elections in May. We're an SB2 town that has it in March. I should also add one very important note, and I'm proud to say because we have our precinct, our village district representatives here, and that is we also review their budget. And I was very proud to be part of that again this year because they just they continue to do exciting things. And the budget committee, people will ask me, they say, well, the village district, why would we do that? Well, because they're a separate governmental body, which is part of the town of Hampton, and has a, a tax rate which is set on whether you own rental property or you're exempt, and that's why it's important for us. So the public at home needs to understand that we do that as well. Is there anybody have any questions on, it's just kind of an opening statement as we set forth for the year. Yes, Mr. LeBranch. You know, I want to mention um, for Joyce's benefit, you might remember last year that Christie printed that book that that's very very informative yes and I don't I wonder if she might be able to get a copy of that <coughs> from Christy it's an excellent book um, I actually have already touched base and so I think um, I, I'm gonna try because we wanted to get over they were awfully busy this yeah. this past oh month absolutely yep. so I think sometime in June I'll go up <coughs> and get a copy of the book or at Good. least review it with her so I can understand everything. But yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Great. Uh, anybody else have comments on that? Okay. So as, as a lead in <coughs> to the agenda for this evening, um, and I know the selectmen recently did it, and I think the school board did it, uh, it's always important as we set forth into this year, let's discuss what happened in March. And, and the results of the election, and I want to go around the table, and I want you to offer your views on what you think happened, what didn't happen, if you have why it happened or didn't happen. But I think it's important to note um, that before we go around the table, I have to say, and I've said it publicly and privately, how proud I am of the job that the Budget Committee did in reviewing the budget this, this past year. You know, we drilled down on a lot of things and asked a lot of questions. And I commend uh, everybody here for doing that. I hope we do the same this year. It's important. It's taxpayer dollars. And that being said, I'm going to start off down the end with uh, Mr. LeBranch. Um, any discussion or comments you want to make and what you, what you thought of the election results? Well, I think that, um, you know, we, we, each, of us, each of us has a job to do, whether it's this committee or the, the, uh, the Board of Selectmen or, or district whether it's school or village district, uh, all of the different boards. You know, at the end of the day, we, we present all the information that we can, and then the voters go and they have their say. They vote, they pull a curtain, they vote, and if, they, if the majority votes for something and it passes, that's what democracy's about. And so, you know, so you, some things you might support, some you don't, 
but at the end of the day, everybody voted. I personally believe that in this town, um, the people that do vote are knowledgeable. I don't think that they walk in there and just without an idea of what they're going to vote for. I think that if they watch these meetings, and a lot of people do, as you well know, um, I think we have a pretty informed um, citizen. So I, I think it works. It works fine the way we do it. And I'm very happy with the, uh, the re you know, the results are what they are. So thank you. Thank you. And I might add before we go to Ms. Capertis that, uh, and I'm very proud to serve with Mr. LeBranch too, you know, people forget that uh, many of you at this table have been around for a long time. They, they carry a lot of knowledge. And, and Stephen was a Beach Precinct Commissioner in the very first televised meeting here, and not, and not in this building, but in the old town hall in September of 1996. And we were, it was a proud moment. I know uh, former Captain Bridal was a member of the fire department then, but at that night we, we uh, elevated Matt Clark to lieutenant and we swore in Justin Cutting as a firefighter in 1996. So how, how far we've come mm -hmm. and to get into this town hall in 1998, which we all remember, and it's just been a great thing. But thank you, Stephen, for your longevity too and appreciate the knowledge. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Mrs. Capertis. I actually don't have, oh, actually I don't have any comments. Um, I'm just excited to be part of the process going forward and um, to be um, educated by not only the people around the table, but um, other people <coughs> in the town that can give me um, some background and some insight so that I can um, be effective for the taxpayers in the future. Thank you and welcome aboard. Mr. Morrow. Basically, <clears throat> from my point of view, I'm very similar to Steve in the sense that <clears throat> When I first got involved in on, on the budget committee, it was like, what power do we have or we don't have? And the really bottom, our role is to, as he stated, look at the expenditures, look what happened, comes in front of us, et cetera, et cetera. I think we, in repeating you, we did that a good job this year. But it's not only us, it's what the selectmen did, what the school board did, and all the going, again, the voters. I also saw the editorial in the Hampton Union, which about this gentleman wrote, the, the editorial. He also talked about the yellow sheet and the people that are involved with that. And there are some people that are anti yellow sheet, for example. And he was the type of person, I, and really wrapped it up, I thought very nicely. He said, I want all the input. So I look at what they say, I look at what the other people say, then I make my own mind up. But I need to see both sides, or three sides, or four sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at something, there's no such thing as black and white, there's no such thing as your side, my side, because like a clock, clock has 360 seconds in it. Well, this person's here, this person's here, this person's here. So if you get 10 people talking versus two people talking, you're going to sometimes get a lot of insight into other things. I think we did a lot of that this year, more so than the prior two years, and that's the part I was proud of. I know some of it irritated some people somewhere along the way, but our role was to present it and that's our job. And we're also supposed to ask the tough questions on behalf of all the taxpayers. If we weren't doing that, we'd be in somebody's back pocket. So I think this is, the Budget Committee has a positive purpose. Last year we asked a lot of <coughs> questions and again the bottom line is it's up to the voters and that's where it should be. So. Thank you, Mr. Marr. Mr. Ladd. Um, having been here for several years, I have two major observations. One is, if at some time during the fall, the Board of Selectmen to the financial office could give a projection of the increased income for the following year, that would help guide us in our deliberations. And secondly, I don't know that anyone really knows when they vote for either budget, particularly the default budget, what will be lost if that budget is approved. So if some process could be made, and I know when they passed, they said it's a bottom line budget, and we don't know what we're going to cut. If there was some sense that could be communicated before that vote, what you will lose if you don't vote for the budget committee budget, that would help the deliberate process quite a bit. Thank you. Mr. Pluff. Uh, the voters clearly turned the budget down. However, the number of warrant articles that we had are specific places that money will be spent. And I think
think they they chose one articles that will move forward, and the ones that they didn't perhaps vote for, they thought were extras. So they just so they put the money where they wanted it, and the rest of it is the way it came out. It, it's just the way it works. You can't put all of the Warren articles in the budget. It would never pass. If you separate them, they have a choice of what they think is specific to operate. They know that that money is going to be put into one place. It's not going to be moved somewhere else. And those projects should get done if the Warren articles had the proper numbers for funding them. And that's, that's a good thing because at least you're getting something accomplished every year. Thank you, Mr. Pluff. Mr. Henderson. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, we, as a budget committee, uh, you know, I have a very uh, important uh, review of all the budgets and the finances and the money in this town. I believe that the taxpayers of this town, um, from what I've seen over the past 30 plus years living in town, they want very good services for their money. And, this, and I believe that the town has given them good service. We have great schools, we have great departments, we have great employees, um, water, sewer, gas. We have a lot of good things going. I think one of the things that we're going to be facing, though, in the very near future is, you know, and we're not going to hit, I'm not here to blame people, but it wasn't that many years ago when there was a group in town, hey, let's have flat taxes, okay? Let's not raise anything. Well, the problem was, was, it's like owning a house. You got a window that leaks and you decide to leave it there for 20 years. You got wood that's rotten on your house and start, things start to fall apart. So now we're at the point in, uh, in the town where we have a lot of things that have to be done. You're right out on the roads on town right now, they're falling apart. We got some major roads that need to be fixed. We got sewer projects. We got waste transfer issues. We got, uh, you know, garbage issues. We got issues over at Public Works with equipment, you know. So we got a lot of things coming up, and I think that, uh, you know, we have to start sitting down and figure out of importance, put these in, you know, of importance of what we need to, you know, start a list, and we got to start fixing things. You can't completely put all these projects off for all these years, because one of these years we're going to get hit hot. You know, I figured one day I was sitting down running some of the numbers. I'm looking at like $200 million to start repairing stuff. When you figure roads, sewer treatment plant, wastewater treatment, you know, it's a lot of money. You know, taxes are going to have to go up to that point. So we're going to have to start hitting these projects a little at a time and trying to get the town back to where it is. Infrastructure is very important. So I think as a budget committee, a lot of those, you know, the budget things are going to come in front of us. So we have to look at it hot, but we also have to look at what can the taxpayers afford. We're not here to turn around and start, you know, having people put for sale signs on their houses because we've raised their taxes you know, for people to have lived here their whole lives and they can't afford to live here anymore. So we have to come up with a happy medium, but we also have to take care of the town. And I'm sure there's some areas that I've seen in the budget over the last few years and some positions that have been created that we could probably turn around and do things with. But that, our job is on the finance side. So um, I'm going to leave it at that for now. We've got a very important job to do. I believe that this board, has, you guys did a great job last year. All the people was on the board, I, I think, you know, a few years ago. I used to say it was like the gong show sometimes, you know? but I used to say the same thing at times over the years about the, you know, the select men at times, you know, back years ago, I was like, oh my God, what am I watching, you know, and same thing. I think, you know, the courtesy and I think things that have, in the different committees and working with each, with each other has really changed. I think it's a, a better atmosphere and that's what we need to do, you know, we need the information from them brought down to us so we can make great, you know, make the uh, pertinent ideas that the taxpayers want. We need it in a fashionable time. If we don't need it in December and January, you know, we need it in the fall as soon as we can get it so we can start, you know, rationalizing and, and going over the budget. So, uh, that's it. Mr. Henderson, thank you. Mr. Bridal. Yeah, I think the voters spoke loud and clear. I think uh, they left us with, with a default budget, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. Um, there, there are two schools of thought on the number of Warren articles. And as you said, you can either have it in Warren articles and people can pick and choose what they want, or you can try to put it in the budget and then worry that the budget's not going to pass. And I think we've wrestled with that for as long as I can remember. You know, I, mean, I can remember some years with as high as 70 Warren articles. Mm -hmm. and this year we had 50. Some people think that's a lot. However, as Mr. Henderson said, we've got a lot of infrastructure in this town that's slowly going away. And that if we don't work on it now and we don't do it periodically moving forward, 
then we're going to get hit with some big stuff down the road, and that's going to be a problem. Thank you, Mr. Brado. Mrs. Brado Russell. The school board is very excited and very uh, dedicated to the taxpayers who did approve our, our budget and all our Warren articles, and we're very appreciative of that. School board is also excited because Hampton Academy will be opening in September of 2019. There will be teachers will start moving in in June. So it will be an exciting time. We'll have plenty of time for the public to come in. If you have any questions, please call Kathleen or Nate. Nate is always willing to answer any budget question and about any project. So this is a very exciting time for the school board. This is, <clears throat> thank you, Mrs. Brown Russell. I had a question. Did you just say the Hampton Academy edition is going to be December? No, September. Oh, September. September okay. 2000. Okay, because I know September. I know at the school board meetings they've been saying all on August. So is it now September? Well, August twenty eighth, <laughs> okay. when school starts. <laughs> well, first of September. I get a lot of questions because twenty six million dollars. People want to make sure that. And it's, we have been very careful with all of the twenty six yeah. million. And mm -hmm. did Nathan send you guys uh, the budget committee, the Hampton Academy reconstruction and renovation? Okay, I'll ask him to send it to you. Please do. Um, I just have a few comments, and pretty much related to what everybody said, but I've got a little interesting take on things. Um, and I'm going to start off with the town. Um, pretty much, and, and I'll use the number 85% of what we didn't recommend, the voters agreed with the Budget Committee, which, which I think is kind of remarkable. And I, I think it sent a couple messages, and Chairman Griffin was right when he said a couple weeks ago that in the matter of the four firefighters, the voters said absolutely, it wasn't even close. And they said no on the, on the code enforcement officer. As a matter of fact, Chairman Griffin said, I think we should put it to bed for at least a year. I, I kind of agree with that. The other thing that I think the voters said was, in the matter of the budget, and, and to Mr. Ladd's point, but I, the viewers at home, and I think, understand, and I think the taxpayer is very smart. It's a hard sell to say to the voters, well, we're going to make cuts because of the default budget, when in fact, and I'm going to ask Mr. Bridal uh, to get us the final surplus from 2018, because I understand it was in a matter of $400,000 or something. So if every year there's money left and we had a default budget, what, what actually is going on? That's the conversation that I hear, and I think we need to be clear. I like Mr. Ladd's point about what would we have to forego, and maybe that's a discussion that we can uh, go in the fall. Uh, it was interesting, too, that the, uh, Mr. Pluff alluded to the amount of Warren articles that, you know, a lot of good things. Public works. I mean, they got a lot of, I think every one of their Warren articles passed. Uh, and it goes to show you people want roads, they want trucks, they want vehicles, and that sort of thing. Uh, the contracts passed, of course, in a big way. But the, the interesting tidbit about this, and this is more from Mrs. Browder Russell, because one of the things I was proud, proud of last year, and it was, I was told it was one of the first time in many years that there were actually in-depth questions asked of SAU 90. And we asked for a lot of information. So I did a little homework. And I, and I just want to, and, and you all, you should be very proud, but I think the message that we sent from the Budget Committee to Superintendent Murphy and the school board was pretty much listened to because the basic message was, OK, we didn't want the positions in your budget. Can you think next year to put them in a warrant article? And also, the taxpayers gave you a huge addition can we kind of cut back on the budget? So interesting enough, the school, SAU 90 in 2018, the school budget passed by 8%. This year it passed by 1%. The SRO, the school resource officer, passed by 12% in 2018. It passed by 0.13% this year. The Winnicott kind of High School budget, all the contracts for the teachers, which have to pass in every SAU 21 passed. They had a recount in Seabrook, and they ended up winning by, what, three or four votes. In 2018, the Winnicott High School budget passed by 10,000, I mean by 10 percent. In this year, it passed by 0.73. Now, somebody might say, why is it important to bring that up? I think it is important, because I think it's a proud moment, and we said it all year, that we are in favor of a lot of the things that are done in this town. And I certainly have been a very passionate person in favor of the schools, Feels, still feel the same way. But I think it's another message, and I know, Ginny, you've been on both sides of it. So you, I know, are looking at that. And, and I, I, can, I can see this year the fine-tuning even more because at the end of the day, for whatever, and it's not right and it's not wrong, a school budget is the highest budget of the taxpayers. And so 
we need to keep bringing that up. Um, and I, I think the discussion, as Mr. Mara pointed out, that we had drilling down, I think really paid off. And I can tell you, um, I, I think we're going to have an excellent year. I, I can't wait till the edition is open. Um, and and I, I know, having worked and served at Mrs. Brown and Russell, that that came within budget and will it will come within yeah. budget, uh, and it, it, that's a great story to tell. So thank you all for your comments uh, as we move forward to uh, this year. And it, it's not easy. And as Mr. Bridal said, <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, Rusty could name 50 things they could use right now. I mean, it, it, there's just a lot of stuff going on in this community, and it's, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's got to be continue to be talked about and have great discussions. Um, the next thing I have on the agenda um, and some of you weren't here last year, but I know you're familiar with it. Late in 2018, we had a, a memorandum and a discussion with Mr. Welch based on tie votes. Now, it has always been customary, and if you go back to the most recent records or even uh, further back, a tie vote was always not recommend. And so that's always been the case. Well, somehow last year, it was found out through nobody's fault that according to the town that it was not being done right and it should go as a blank. Chairman Jones at the time spoke with DRA and said, what is up with this? And DRA came back and as all of you who were here last year, it was too late in the season, we said, we're going to leave it blank. DRA said, as a, on a vote from your budget committee, you could keep it as not recommended. They didn't say either way. They said you could go one way or the other. So we decided those of us who were here to come back this year said let's wait till we all reorganize in the April meeting and let's have a, a discussion on um, and either way however anybody wants to do it if we have tie votes and we had four tie votes on very critical articles last year um, do we go on the Warren article saying not recommended which was always the case because let's face it it's not a majority or we decided, based because it was last minute, to go along with what was said, and we put it as a blank. So if you notice on those articles, it was just blank. And when moderator Casazer at the deliberate session spoke about it, he just said, you know, a 4 4 tie. So, Stephen, you, we, we talked a lot about this. I want to start down and go around the table. How do you feel we should, the direction this committee should go if we have tie votes on anything this year, as far as re, uh, not, not recommending or leave blank? I think it should say not recommended. That's my thought. Thank you. Ms. Capertis. Can it just say that it's a tie or we can't say that it's a tie? It's got to be not recommended or blank. I would say blank. So you'll say blank. Yeah, okay. I would say blank. Okay, so one not recommend, one blank. <coughs> not recommended. Mr. Ladd. Blank. I so stand two, two. Yeah, and I say not recommended, <coughs> Mr. Yeah. Henderson. Yeah, I would go with the uh, not recommended on that one. Brian, can it say no recommendation? It's from what we understand, Rusty, it has to say not, recommendation, not recommended or blank. And I would say blank. It's okay. Because remember, we've always had not recommended. Ginny yeah. remembers those days. So yeah. what do you think, Ginny? Not recommended or blank? I'd say blank. Okay, so Is we have two, three, four, five. <laughs> um, Let's have the hands on not recommended as on tie votes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and those who say leave blank. Four. So we will have it as not recommended for the 2019 year. Could I just have a discussion about that? Go ahead. Is there a reason why you would prefer to have it say not recommended? If, because if it's a tie vote, then that means that the Board, there are members of the board that want it and members of the board that don't want it. So why would it not be valuable to the taxpayer to know that it is a tie? There's one word that you would use, and that is majority. So the most of the people, and I had a lot of discussion with people in town about this, they said if it's a tie vote, it's like anything else, it's not recommended. It's, it's, it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's, there's not a recommendation put forth by the committee. You know what I mean? So no majority. Well, no majority, and it's like a, if you had a motion on your. Well, and that's why I said, what, what, could you say no recommendation? No, it's got to be not that recommended. Way, you. No, because that's actually that's a different wording. 
we are, what we're saying is we did not recommend this because it was a 4 4 tie. No recommendations. Go ahead, Mr. Lamb. The statute clearly says the budget committee may present the tally of the vote. Mm -hmm. It does not say if it's a 4 4 vote, you take a position for or against that particular article. Uh, so I would think we, and legally, <coughs> you present the tally to the Board of Selectmen, who then put it on the warrant. No, well, the Board of Selectmen don't put it on the warrant. We, we, we set the, for well, the budget, for the bu budget well, committee, we set the public hearing. But, but let me stop you there for a minute. We to the statute, the well, Selectmen place the numbers on the warrant. But, we oh. don't print that warrant. The Board of Selectmen do. But if you remember, you can go back to review the meeting. We had a 45-minute discussion as Tim Jones spent an hour with DRA folks explaining, and they said specifically. So we went to DRA, and they said legally we have the right as a budget committee to decide do we want to leave it blank on the warrant or do we want to continue, which has been tradition, by the way, up until Mr. Welch brought this up, and he admitted it, for the last 50 years, it's gone on on tie votes. It's not recommended. I'm not talking about precedent. This is what we've always done, not recommended. Well, well they've done it or not. The statute does not appear well. to give the authority to do it. I would recommend you ask the New Hampshire Municipal Association for their opinion on this issue as the legal... If the vote. budget committee... I re prefer not to do that, but if the budget committee... I think we're getting into a situation... We, we went down this road and we talked to DRA who specifically sets all the 10% the limitations on the budget at the deliberate session, all the warrant articles. They were the organization and they were very clear. And so, I mean, if, if you want to vote to have, uh, we'll have somebody talk, I mean, <laughs> in the past we haven't been allowed to call NHMA, so I don't know what's going on there. If you want somebody to do that, I can get with the town manager through Rusty and say, can we have an opinion from HMA? I certainly don't think we need it, but if, if that's what the committee wants to do. I absolutely do, based on the language of the statute. Okay, does anybody, so you, your, your motion is to say let's get an opinion from the NHMA. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Prado Russell. Um, and he, well, let's get a vote first, and then if the vote's in the affirmative, then we're going to have to figure out how to get the, um, that opinion move forward because we don't have access to the NHMA. Yeah, I believe you do. We did that well, last year. Last year, we allowed the the chairman and the, the, the board to do that. As far as I know, and every chairman has sat on this board, it was a year-to-year -year thing. We haven't received any indication right. that that policy uh, is in Unless it's changed. I, I don't think it has changed. So. Okay. So, any discussion? We haven't been told that no. it's changed. No. No. Why are we the only town in the entire state that can't get a hold of it, that legal assistance? Yeah. It was voted in by the selectmen years ago, and I had a big yeah, argument that was with changed. the gentleman that, that was voted. Last year was changed that they had to go through you to no, get it approved, and before had... we get to look at it, no, what I remember hearing, it was. may I finish, please? Sure. Thank you. What I thought I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, when Tim finally came through and we did vote in that night, we were told we had to go through Tim and Tim had to go through the selectmen. But then the selectmen, when they got the response, had to review it first. That's not talking directly and get different <coughs> ideas. Yeah. My interpretation is for the rest of the state, anybody, they were allowed to. We were the only one and I got a little bit of debate from the lawyer, kept explaining it. He said, it's up to your select people who are the legislative, and that's what they decided a couple of years ago, so we can't do it. So if you can change it, that so we can do what everybody else can do. I think that would be wonderful, because you're trying to edu get educated, that's all. We have a can, motion can in we, a second, so yeah. can we work on that first? Well, and I want to, but I almost think, does it make sense first to have you go back and I get, believe what, what was last said, nothing has changed since then, was that the chairman of this board could go to the NHMA and talk to them. The only thing that was said was that if it was a difference of opinion than what the Board of Selectmen had, to kindly let us know that. And the, that's all that was. The, the only thing I want to add is... And, and this I, would have nothing to do with the Board of Selectmen. Well, and I respect what you're saying, but let me just offer something. I sat here and watched three years ago when this budget committee asked for results of a 91A problem in writing and never got it. 
and it left egg on the face, and I'm just concerned, and I'm a big believer in facts and in process, and I have no way, I have no problem either way what this committee wants to do with that vote, but I do have a problem unless I see something, uh, Mr. Marr is correct, and Mr. Pluff, if I don't see something in writing, no one has said to Chairman Warburton and the Vice Chairman Pluff anything in writing, and, and we know what in writing means, of what the rules are this year, because they have changed since this is, go, go ahead, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, Brian, I, uh, two years ago, I'll go with what Mr. Moore had said. Um, this board went, uh, well, there was a big discussion on, on going to uh, NHMA and having, uh, you know, some answers for us. And I, it went on for quite some time, and it got a little heated at times. And the, uh, it got back to us, because I always used to say when I was part of the union, I ran the union, things like this, I had carte blanche to go up and talk to them. The town pays a big fee to let us have access. I believe that this board should have had access. And we didn't, shouldn't have to jump through hoops, et cetera, to be able to do it. And two years ago, it was made very clear to us that we could not go see them unless we went through the Board of Selectmen. Um, and then they would make the decision and, and decide. You know, we basically had to say, okay, this is what we want to ask them for a question. And that would go back. To, then they would decide whether it went forward. My thing is, why as a separate entity should we have to jump through hoops and give you what we want to ask them? If we have an issue amongst this group here, we should have access to them. That's why the town pays this big fee to them for each group. And I think every entity, we're a separate entity from the Slugman, the school board is, and if we all have questions, hey, let's get our best bang for our buck and let us go up there and discuss an issue with them. But it goes through our chair. It doesn't go through us individually. It has to go through <coughs> our chair and our chair handles it. And that's the way it was left last year. <coughs> Mr. Puff, am I right? Well... I thought it was like that in the beginning of the year, and then it it, it, it was f at the at that time. Mr. <coughs> Jones and I had a meeting upstairs, and and it was more or less agreed that we were going to be allowed to contact NHMA. Regina came back and said that the board was going to vote on that, and they changed it. <coughs> they wanted. They wanted the request to come from the chairman or the vice chairman to the selectman's rep, go to the selectman, and then we would be allowed to, to call if it was, and I want to be careful how I say this. Um, I'd like to go back and look at that because I don't believe that was the way it was, but I may be wrong. Well, that's what I understood okay. until the very end of the year. Hold on, Joyce. And then Mr. Jones called about... Uh, when when we when the budget committee did not have a positive vote on the budget, and he had, I think, two conversations in a short period of time, like less less than a week, because we were meeting almost twice a week, um, and we we were, we were presented a letter from NHMA that said that if the budget committee did not have an affirmative vote for the budget, that the, the budget committee's budget would not be accepted and the selectmen's budget would be put on the warrant. And that was, I'm pretty sure that was the night that we had the conversation with the school in here, and they had the upstairs set up. You ran up and down to allow people to speak that, that were upstairs because they had to have time to get down here. Right. You, you stayed in the Public back of the hearing. room. Yeah. That letter, we had to vote that night. That was DRA. That was, DRA. That was DRA. That was DRA that night. That, that night. But, but that was, he talked to those people, but I don't think he ever went to NHMA. No. Go um, ahead, Ms. Cabretas. In the October minutes, um, October 16th of 2018, under old business, it says New Hampshire Municipal Association. Ms. Barnes reported that the Board of Selectmen rejected her attempt to allow elected officials to directly access NHMA. However, Selectmen did change the rule to allow restricted access meaning that BOS and budget committee members can put questions to their respective chair or vice chair who could then communicate with the NHMA. Right. 
The BOS also determined that the Budget Committee could determine the topic of the free NHMA annual seminar as long as everyone was invited. And then it goes on to talk about the fact that Mr. Jones recalled decades where there was restricted access and that he was happy with that the rule change was in a positive direction. Um, Came in October. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. And then for a while. It, also, it also mentions you as well. Um, so anyway, it what, says what it's October. It mention, what do you mean? Uh, it just says um, that you were disappointed, reminding that historically all elected town officials, non-elected officials, and employees had access to NHMA, that you felt that the rule restriction was an um, abdication of town responsibilities and causing tension. Um, you further questioned how using taxpayer money that the BOS could make restrictive rules affecting a separately elected body with motions created by the town attorney. And before, uh, is it you, you're done? I am. Uh, before I go to Mr. Mara, and I want to bring in Mrs. Browder Russell, because I asked this question of the, the school superintendent after I made a comment, um, anyone on the Hampton School Board can go to the New Hampshire School Board Association. Absolutely. Thank you. And then I also brought, not just the chairman, anyone, and, and I also brought up, and, and a compliment to Mrs. Bridal Russell, and who she and Mike and I served together in the 90s. And I can tell you that as a selectman, I picked up the phone and called NHMA. You picked up the phone. Fred picked up the phone. Bonnie picked up the phone. Russell, whoever. The, the, the reason I get a little strange on this is because I'm, I'm still not convinced that the rule that a chair, a vice chair, for my purposes, still doesn't sit well. I don't think it should matter. We are paying $19,000 out of the taxpayer budget that the check gets mailed out, so they get they already got paid. Uh, and it's, it's the fall budget regardless, they get paid. So I, I want to make sure that my representation of our taxpayers, that everyone has the chance. I don't think it should be just me, and I don't think it should be Mike. I think if David Mara, who went to that great seminar in Stratum and, and found out what he told us last year, wants to call an HMA and bring back information, that's fine. Before we take, so one more thing, uh, and, and David, I'm going to go to you, but my concern about taking a vote on the not recommended tonight is that I'm, I'm not clear that I have a good answer on what role we can play as far as protocol with the NHMA. Does everybody agree with that? Uh, do they feel like I do, or uh, Mr. Henderson? And we'll start with Mr. Mara first. Well, I disagree with what the selectman just said, but again, it needs to be looked into and maybe some writing here. But if I remember properly what I heard when Tim got back to us, we had to go through the chairman, which was Tim, which I disagree with completely. That's BS in my point of view. And then he had to go to the chairperson of the selectman Right. to tell them we were doing. And then he, we were told at the time that you have to review the results so we can even and look at it. The they, they, there, now, along with that, which goal. happened years yeah. ago, Mary Louise was chairperson, and she got shut out of call, calling the NHMA because of the selectmen. She went to the lawyer, the, lawyer, the town lawyer wouldn't speak to her. She couldn't, as a chairperson of this committee, could not get through to that group. That's when it all started. So it started with the selectmen. A few years back, so I'd like to know if it was ever in writing, but it seemed that it was word of mouth, and the word of mouth somebody called up the, the, the lawyers in the state house, and the answer was no. And that's when I went to this thing in Stratum, and with all the other towns there, yeah. we were the only town, because they were telling everybody, <coughs> Judy said, everybody here that works for the town could call up because it's an educational thing, and we were likely had our hands handcuffed. And in my interpretation, they still are. So if you could help get us something in writing, I we could all do it. I think that would be wonderful. Mr. Buck, would you like to uh, withdraw this motion a second and inquire before I, we vote on this? I would like to inquire through Mr. Bridal in writing from the town of what the, the current policy is. And I, and I would add, and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Capertis, you're right on target, let me tell you. I want to comment on the reason my comments were on October. We were disappointed because Mr. Mara asked last March, and then April, and then May, and then June. By the time we got the opinion, we were already in budget review, and we didn't have time to do anything. So 
I want to get this nipped in the bud and so that we can feel free. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know that you folks may not know or may know that we, I, I would respectfully say, let's hold off on this motion. We can come yeah. back to it. It's not like we're voting on things tonight. And, and we will look into it, uh, to Mr. Ladd's point. So once we get the NHMA figured out, and then if the, if the board votes that we should ask NHMA for an opinion, I'll be glad to go along with that. Mr. Henderson, did you have something else? Okay. They're all set. Everybody feel good about withdrawing the motion, and Mr. Bridal will get back to us for the May 21st meeting. Okay. Um, under old business, and, you know, I, I had a couple of people call me. I just want to, when I put the agenda, review financials online, that, what, it, what that meant was I wasn't going to review them here because they're like 30 pages long. <laughs> So if you go, and, and <laughs> Mr. Lehab would be saying it's 10 right. 10.30. Yeah. When they come. So we all got, <laughs> I know, we all got, and they were excellent. I mean, the, the, the reports that uh, Christy does, and they're, they're well explained. Um, we just got an email this afternoon from her for the March ones. What I would ask is, as we get into our May meeting, that if you have any particular questions, um, that we can, and if we can't answer them, Mr. Bridal or Mrs. Bridal Russell can take back and the school financials as well. Um, they have a great website too, the SCU 90 website. Um, I also remind the folks at home because there are people, the school, SAU 90 is on a different year budget. Their budget's from July 1st to June 30th. So their current budget year ends June 30th, even though they voted, we voted in March for their budget, their new budget starts for the next year, starts July 1st of 2019, uh, the 19-2020 the budget. Um, any questions on that? Um, on the new business, Mr. Brido, Selectman's report. Um, no, we have the uh, uh, public works in. Yes. You know, we've asked each one of our departments to come back. Public works brought theirs in first. They made about uh, $180,000 in cuts. Yeah. And uh, I, I've heard some grumblings about the uh, transfer station being closed Sunday afternoons, but you know when you look at their budget and how it works, uh, the uh, public works all at Saturdays and Sundays is overtime. Um, and so one, it's an expensive time for the for the whole town. Two is they 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 actually looked at it and said what's out of all what we need to do, what is the best times that we can least affect the, the, uh, the taxpayers or, or the citizens of Hampton? And they said, usually by 11, 11.30, things start to really quiet down at the dump or the transfer station. We don't have a dump anymore. Uh, so um, that can come up, you know, from a let, they're closing at 11. There was some talk on maybe rotating Saturdays and Sundays, do one one week and one the other, having them off. That wouldn't serve any purpose, and I think they thought it would confuse the mm -hmm. citizens even more, because then you wouldn't know which day, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you'd have to go look at a calendar or something just to figure out which day the dump was open. Well, again, the transfer station. <laughs> uh, so, but they made some cuts. They, they, they cut out some sign maintenance. They cut out some tree maintenance. Uh, they cut out some uh, uh, sewer um, sidewalks, sidewalks trees. and uh, trees. Yep. So there's, there were a number of things they cut up. We'll hear back from again eventually here from the police department, the fire department, rec department, and uh, the other departments to see where we can do that. So, any questions of Mr. Bridal? Go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. Rusty, I just want to mention that um, I saw Jen this afternoon, and I heard that you made those cuts during the uh, presentation last night. No, those, no, those were last, already done last okay. week. But they talked about them again last night. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and um, and I I was at a meeting this afternoon um, with coastal flooding, and immediately my concern with cutting with the sewers, I asked uh, Jen, those covers that they they cost six hundred dollars each. Yeah. The covers that they use to, for the water infiltration. Seals. That's, that's mm -hmm. during a real high tide. It's it's filling our uh, sewage treatment yeah, plant with, with ocean water. And that isn't, just for the record, that isn't going to be cut, okay, because they plan on buying so many of those a year and, and installing them. And even though they had to make some hard choices, that's not one of the items that, you know, when you said sewers, that immediately I thought to myself, oh, I hope they're not going to 
you know. Well, they have a couple there. of streets in town right. that they uh, they're looking to pave eventually, and what they've tried to do in the in their processes before they go in and repave or reclaim a street, they want to make sure they have everything underneath that street done. So you're not going back next year after you just paved it and cutting through it, and so. But they, they've had some that they're going to have to, not say that they're not going to do, but they're going to put it out a little farther. Mm -hmm. So Thank you. Oh, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Bridal? Uh, I, what you just said confirms what I think is the better approach. The voters, if told the transfer station would close at 11 o'clock Sunday morning as part of the default budget outcome, but then have more information to decide whether to support the selectman's budget or the default budget. I think you're right. I think, and that that's going to be a better uh, a better handle as we move forward on how we present the budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that there's some good merit to putting that in there. Uh, sometimes you don't know what you're going to, you know, at all the pay because when you do your budget in in October, November, by the time you get to March. Things have changed. Some roads have gone all the heck. Other stuff is done. You don't know what's going to change. But I think they could do a better job at knowing if it doesn't pass, this is what maybe. Thank you. Mrs. Bridal Russell, school board report. It's really what I said before is we're getting the Hampton Academy ready for opening. Yeah. We're, they're working overtime to get it done and within budget and uh, at getting the most bang for their buck. Superintendent Murphy and Nathan Lunny are in there weekly to get, actually I think they're in there probably daily, to get <laughs> reports and to make sure that everything's going all right. I will have Nathan give you the copy of the Reconstruction Renovation Project Summary so that you will see where the money's being spent and where it's going. But we're very excited and it's looking good. They hope to have the graduation of the eighth grade in the new gym. Nice. So it new, should be exciting. New gym or the new chapel? Uh, um, the new auditorium, auditorium. I'm sorry. Yeah. The new auditorium, so that should be exciting. Any questions of Mrs. Bridal Russell? I just had a, a, a couple uh, questions in the statement. One of the discussions that we had at this board last year, Ginny, was asking Superintendent Murphy, which we never did get the answer. You have a big budget. You have a yep. lot of stuff that comes into that, special education costs, federal mandates, per student costs, whatever. And we know that the per student cost in SAU, SAU 90, ladies and gentlemen, is $22,000 per child. Not two, 22. My question is, can we get information from you that will help us in our thought process this year? How much of your SAU 90 budget is mandated by either federal or state laws, because that came up last year. I will say, Brian, 100% of special ed, which is the okay, largest but, driver, right. is, is federally mandated. And we have uh, noticed an increase in our right. special ne needs programs, right. our transportation, all of that. So that is driving the budget up. Well, that, that is true, but that's 100% of special ed. I want to know the total budget. If you've got a $20 million budget, what percentage of that total budget, not just special ed, is mandated by state and federal? It's going to be very important because we know the projections that school enrollment in the next eight years at the academy is going down. That's not, it's no, it's already. And so it's better, to Rusty's point about explaining to the voters and really giving them more information, I think is going to be better. Um, the other thing I would ask, every September, uh, Superintendent Murphy and Mr. Lunny come in here uh, to give us kind of like a end of the year synopsis and also kind of a precursor to their December budget review. Can you ask if September 21st um, is... They would be happy to come in on yeah. September 21st. And the only other question I had for... Uh, hold, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's on the topic you're on right now. Finding out the special eds by the federal government. I think that's very, very important. And I'm behind 100% mm -hmm. what they're doing. It's phenomenal. But my thing I'd add to it, what was the percentage five years ago, four years ago, so, so has it been going up this way, so that why it, the taxes are going up? Absolutely. So I don't want just last year's and this year's. No, no. We, like a couple, so no. you can find out what the trend is. Is that well, possible? Interesting it enough. is. 
Yeah. I think. Well, thank I'm pretty you. sure. Thank Interesting you. enough, I'm so glad of a good segue in what you just said because uh, in conjunction, Mr. Bridal, if you could ask, we had also talked last year about having, and I think Christy is always already aware of this, and she started working on it, a three-year comparison yeah. of, Mr. Zanoy brought this up last right. year, three-year comparison of expenditures and what areas stand out where, you know, Mr. Henderson could look at that in a red pen and say, wow, why is that increased? Or Joyce, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be important to us. Um, the other question I asked, and because I mentioned to you the school resource officer was very close vote. Two votes. Two, <laughs> yeah. My question to you is this. Or let me make a comment. I don't know if the public is aware that the school resource officer is paid for by the Hampton School District. However, when that school resource officer is not there and another officer comes in for whatever reason, it's time and a half by the town. The reason that's important is we have got to do a better job. The entire elected boards, not the non-elected, the elected boards in this community who make decisions on budgets and recommendations to let the public have more information because I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. And I think that's just one example of a lot. Um, and, and so I, I just put that out there. And, and like you said, Mrs. Brado Russell, you're absolutely right. Everything passed, and that's a good thing. Uh, and I, I wish the best of SCU 90 as we move on. But I think we're going to really be tackling this mandate issue. This is going to be the discussion all year about what can we touch and what we can't. And you're right. This about is very. This is what's driving the school board right now is special education. Yep. It's federally mandated. You cannot refuse special ed services. Oh yes. You I cannot refuse transportation. Some of them to get their best um, services, they have to go out of state, and some of them have to go overnight. And but we did bring a program in for the eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade students of special ed, we brought it in-house. So those students will no longer have to travel or go somewhere out of town. So that will be a cost saving to the district. But special ed is driving the budget. And you know, you just brought up two good words and I think you being on the budget committee back on is gonna be very helpful. I would earmark that comment and bring it up all year. What is the school district doing? What are we saving? In other words, I'm telling you, people watch Mr. Bridal's meetings, your meetings, our meetings, the planning board, the zoning board, all the boards, and I think it's going to be important, not just as we get into November, December, every meeting that we bring up some sort of, you know, uh, Mr. LeBranch explained the village district budget extremely well last year. I mean, he's done it several years, but uh -huh. I was here last year, and extremely well. And Mr. Ladd's input on, it really is kind of exciting. You know, people say, oh, it went up. Well, but look what they're getting in return. And what, what, what the great events that go on down there. People like that. And it's like a bang for the buck. So if we can do more of that, and, and I appreciate you being uh, on this year, too. So great stuff. Uh, anything, any other questions for Mrs. Bridal Russell? The one thing I do have to bring up is Sacred Hearts. Uh, money that yes. the voters gave them. Yes. I got a call from another church asking if they could get you know some money, and that Sacred Heart money is given for services to Hampton children mm -hmm. who are at Sacred Heart. Right. It's not for lawn care. Right. It's not for anything else, right. but specific right. services and a nursing service for Hampton children. But not everybody understood that, so I wanted to say that tonight. I have to bring that up, too, because, Ginny, I'm so glad you said that, because my own pastor of my Our Lady of Miraculous Metal Church and others, and I lecture every week, asked me that question for the election. Why does it have to be on the warrant every year yeah. when, in fact, overwhelmingly we support it? Because, as Mrs. Brown and Russell said, it's the students of Hampton who reside in Hampton who decide to go to St. Christ School, and we are... What is now it's down to 38. Rusty, you remember yeah. it was up to 90,000, yeah. or David, you were too. Now it's, a, it's a good deal for the town. I mean, let's face it, if we mm -hmm. had the, if those kids would incorporate. But there's a lot of people. It goes back to the education factor about what we've talked about. So I'm glad you brought that up because Father Gary was very impressed again this year that everything uh, passed it to that uh, favor. But thank you, Jenny, and, okay. and excellent work. Um, mm -hmm. Village District Report, Mr. Ladd. Well, I can report like the school board. <laughs> our budget did pass which is going to allow us to expand in several areas. The Circus Labor Day weekend is a go. We're working now with the state on permitting. Uh, the Country Week will be greatly expanded. Yes. That's the second week in July. <coughs> and we're looking into other activities. Uh, 
course, we're just coming on the ground. We're like the tulips in <laughs> April. <laughs> But things are looking very positive. <coughs> the only wild card at this point that we are aware of is the uncertainty of the weather. Oh, well, sure. It's, it's everything. It's weather, 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 weather. <laughs> but I, I had a, 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 and Mr. LeBranch, I know it's going to fall off when he hears me say this, but I happened to watch the replay of that meeting. And my question to you guys is, why did it take 12 minutes to count 45 <laughs> votes? <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> special ed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this little branch walking oh, oh. back and forth saying, are we done? Are we right? Yeah, and yeah. so I was chuckling to Mike about it. I said, I got to get the guys going mm -hmm. just to rest some of them. We and had so, too many counts. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough balance. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, at this time, Mr. Ladd, thank you. And thank you again for being our representative. Uh, again this year. Mr. LeBranch handed out a memo to all of us dated, well, it's actually dated April 8th, but he went to the Coastal yeah. Hazards and Adaptation Team. Good thing I don't have to say that three times, but um, he went to that meeting today and he was appointed as the uh, representative. Uh, Stephen, you want to give us a quick report? Yeah, I, I think that you, if you want to take this home and take a look at it, it's a, um, it tells you what's been going on for the last three months and what preparing and getting everything ready. And I have to tell you, it's an exciting uh, committee to be on, a lot of information. And uh, it's, it's, it's very professionally presented. We went over some flood maps this afternoon and some projections out into the future and um, a lot of very interesting things. I would say at this stage, we're still gathering information. And, uh, but a lot of very smart people were there this afternoon, did a very nice presentation. It was a two hour meeting. And this is a summary of what we went over today. And if you look on the back, you can see, you know, if, if, if this committee has any questions that you'd, or, or uh, anything at all that you'd like me to take back to the, um, to this team, um, <coughs> we'll be meeting again next month. Um, we meet, it just so happens, the third Tuesday of the month, just like this committee, except we meet at 3 in the afternoon. Oh. But if anybody has any comments or any questions for this uh, group, please don't hesitate. Go ahead, do this. Go ahead, Go ahead, Go ahead Mr. Mar. The top of this says, Coastal Hazards and Adaption to the Members, which gets checked. And the first thing that comes to my mind is I hope, and we don't know, this includes Seabrook, Hampton, Rye, and all the coast, or is it just Hampton? This is just Hampton, and there's another group. Why don't we join forces with all the, all the other towns? There's another group that just met recently down, and it, and it includes Seabrook as well. And um, I don't have the acronym for that. I can't remember what the name of it is. Somebody else might. Bob, you might remember the name of it. Coastal. Coastal has it. Yeah. So. I think it's There's another group coastal. anyway, but it, it's interesting. It's Seabrook, Hampton, Estuaries. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of the people, is the, the, they're the same people on these committees. Mm -hmm. So, oh, except this is, this is Hampton. This is just Hampton. But the way the ocean works, <laughs> it's not going to stop between Seabrook and Northampton. No. So I would think if, if the New Hampshire group would be more strength and ideas get if we go, get all the way from, shall we say, our entire coastline, if not going with New England, because we, we don't stop at New Hampshire and Maine and New Hampshire and Seabrook and Massachusetts. Because when the water comes, when these big flood comes and the tide's up 10 feet, it floods the entire coastline. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Right? This, so that's uh, just a question. No, well, I'm going to bring it. I will bring that question back, David, and I'll come back with an answer next month. How's that? Thank you. Sir. All these presentations are by mostly by state people, and this is all woven together. Oh, of course. Individually it's, as towns, but it's the best practices being shared with the multiple communities. With, so it's not because there might be things you could buy or do, and if you shared monies, you, you, you don't have to get yep. four of them. You get yep. one of them. I'm making something up here. Just Mr. Bio. Steve, I got what you might want to talk to them about, and I'm sure Mr. Pluck knows more about this than I do. But Meadow Pond. Yeah. When I was a kid, that thing was eight, nine feet deep. Now it's probably eight or nine inches deep. Right. And it's got a lot of sediment in it. Mm -hmm. 
And we may have to think about down the road about dredging that. And that would give you more capacity, capacity for water, water flow. to get the water flow moving. Yeah. And so that might be something they want to take a look at. Actually, Rusty, that came up this afternoon. Well, good. And <laughs> the, you may remember, this is, I don't want to do, take too long here. The, um, the bridge washed away on Winnicunit Road yep. a number of years ago. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And the, and the then director um, had it rebuilt. And when that was rebuilt, and I found this out from Mr. Welch, um, it wasn't rebuilt properly. It wasn't engineered properly. It actually is like, it acts like a restrictor. Um, instead of having free flow because it wasn't built high enough and big enough for capacity so that that little bridge ends up acting like a like a funnel almost, yeah. and it causes, it's causing problems in that, uh, and they talked about that specifically, and as whether that culvert would be dredged, and, but Bob, you, were, you heard some of that uh, discussion as well, but I'll, I will, I'll bring that up, Rusty. Yeah, they got a lot of those Phragmites and stuff at the bottom of High Street now, mm -hmm. yeah. and to get rid of them is not an easy thing to do, yes. but I think if we got that, some of that out of there and got that area dredged, it might make that refresh that area and make it so it's able to hold more water. You might remember a few years ago, Rusty, um, I don't remember who the selectmen were at the time, but they actually got some inmates from, uh, I think it might have been Rockingham. It was. It okay, was. and they, they cleaned up that high street area and, and, and cut back those Phragmites because there had been a fire, I think, down in Seabro uh, Salisbury with the Phragmites, and it, it was quite a fire. You might even remember I that. Do, I yeah. Do. So that's the, something. The problem with the Phragmites are unless you take the, the whole yeah. plant out, yeah. including the roots, oh, by yeah. cutting them off, you just they, they come right back. They, they, they grow yeah. back stronger. Yeah. 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 But I, I will I will certainly bring those uh, questions okay. back to the one other thing they mentioned about dredging is it's not at all certain that dredging Hampton Harbor is going to produce a meaningful impact on the flooding issues. Uh, and I agree. Yeah. I agree. But this isn't the harbor. It's up. No, I it's understand. Up pond There's so many areas of yeah. the eel pond, and, yeah. and, and and some of those ponds that haven't been touched in probably 70 or 80, 90 years at least. Yeah. And for the people watching at home, this is an important discussion because why? Because first of all, it's a huge issue in Hampton and the Seacoast, but a lot of these issues will be addressed in the form of dollars. Uh, as we move forward to, to take care of these issues, and I'm very glad they have represented. And there may, there may be some federal, federal grant, grants, grant sure. money out there for that. Absolutely. Which is, uh, what we should be going after. That's something that was talked about as well this afternoon. And you know, I'm, I'm going to, one of the things that actually came up, we were looking at the, uh, the Gristmill Dam, and um, in the, in the, the maps where we, that we were looking at didn't show it, of course, because they just finished building it. And, um, it, I, and Rusty, what is the status on that? Is it finished now? The dam is basically finished. They had, last I knew, they had some minor cleanup. Still a little bit. Still, but the, the dam itself is finished. I actually went by today and the wooden railings were up on the top of the dam and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I think there is some, I'll say no, cosmetic, but. So that's, it's filling up now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions of Mr. LeBranch? Just had a couple of quick housekeeping. Um, does anybody want to take a guess of what happened on June 10th, 1995? June 10th. 1995. We opened the transfer station. And what's interesting, 24 years ago, we had a soft opening in May, and those of us who were there, it was quite a weekend, but uh, it just goes to show you how much that is, gets you utilized, and people just love it. You mentioned transfer station tonight. Um, a couple quick hits. Our next meeting, this is what the plan is, and I, I would think that everybody's going to agree with this, uh, knowing we love our summers. We will have a meeting May 21st, uh, and uh, a meeting June 18th, but we'll take July and August off unless anything or shattering happens, and we all know what we do in case of an emergency meeting. We had one last year due to the uh, project at the beach, but that's already in the works. So the plan right now is to have May 21st, June 18th, and then we'll have a meeting September 17th with the schools, hopefully. And I will get a schedule. I'm going to be meeting 
Mike and I are probably set a meeting up with Christina to go over the uh, dates. But up through October, put in your calendar the third uh, Tuesday. And then after that, all bets are off in the Tuesday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And I am going to try to keep the Tuesdays and Thursdays because a couple of the Wednesday yeah. meetings, Mr. Ladd and Mr. LeBranch uh, couldn't make it. It just kind of piled things up. And I, you know, we hear on the other boards, and rightfully so, a lot of good news stories. But I, I have to say again how proud I am to support the gentleman to my left. He's going to be leaving in a couple of weeks to, again, support something that he was very involved in, still is, and started the Police Unity Tour, which is for our fallen officers. And I have to tell you, for those of you in the community who don't know it, um, Steve Henderson, our retired sergeant from Hampton Police Department, well respected. It's If you're a part of this, this organization, it's just a wonderful feeling in your life. And I want to thank Steve for the great effort and the hours that he puts into doing that. And again, another good news story in Hampton. Uh, anyone else have any further comments? And we'll wait to hear back from Mr. Brido on the NHMA. Anybody have any further com comments? I oh. would have one. Go ahead, Mr. Ladd. In the May meeting, could you have a sense of what the June agenda might be to see whether there's really a need to have I, I absolutely will. And okay. I think that's a good point. And it may be that June could go bye-bye too. And, and I know you he vote. Voted. You vote for <laughs> <and> Bob <laughs> <Lester> <laughs> <may stop. laughs> Thank you. This meeting is adjourned at eight sixteen. Thank you for the viewers at home, and thank you for my fellow members. Good night. Good night.